Hi everyone, this is your ancient artist welcoming you to a podcast that will be on my Urantian Artist channel. I want to thank all of you for watching our videos about our Heavenly Father and Jesus' plan for us to grow spiritually and to desire to have the gift of an eternal life career after our mortal career is finished. Today our 13th podcast is titled Parenting by Jesus. Now this may seem like an unusual title to some who know he didn't get married as a mortal, but others will realize that he spent 15 years raising his brothers and sisters. When his father, Joseph, was killed when the derrick fell on him and his mother, Mary, was pregnant, he shouldered the responsibility of being the caregiver of his brothers and sisters. I had not fully realized this, but remember that Jesus was the firstborn of nine children. Just imagine, Mary was the mother of nine children. There was Joshua, which was Jesus, James, Miriam, Joseph, Simon, Martha, Jude, Amos, and Ruth. Now, they weren't all born perfect. Two were slow of mind. One was rebellious. One died from a high fever. And it seemed to me that James and Ruth were the ones who were brightest of the rest. Jude was rebellious, but the way Jesus handled it, he finally did believe in Jesus' mission and was at his cross with Mary when Jesus was crucified. By the beginning of this year, Jesus had fully won his mother to the acceptance of his methods of child training. The positive injunction to do good in the place of the older Jewish method of forbidding to do evil. In his home and throughout his public teaching career, Jesus invariably employed the positive form of exhortation. Always and everywhere did he say, You shall do this, you ought to do that. Never did he employ the negative mode of teaching derived from the ancient taboos. He refrained from placing emphasis on evil by forbidding it, while he exalted the good by commanding its performance. Prayer time in this household was the occasion for discussing anything and everything relating to the welfare of the family. And I can see that that would be like um, having a family home evening together. And they had that every night. That's really wonderful. I would like to welcome my associate, Callie. Callie, read us about how Jesus' brothers and sisters were all different, and they were not perfect, and he had to help them even as we parents have challenges with our children. Your ancient artist, thank you for having me on your, on your episode about Parenting in Jesus. It says in paper 127, speaking more about uh, Jesus' brothers and sisters, it says in general, all of the children, particularly the girls, who consult Jesus about their childhood troubles and confide in him just as they would have in an affectionate father. James was growing up to be a well-balanced and even tempered youth, but he was not so spiritually inclined as Jesus. He was a much better student than Joseph, who was a faithful worker, was even less spiritually minded. Joseph was a plotter and not up to the intellectual level of the other children. Simon was a well-meaning boy, but too much of a dreamer. He was a slow in getting settled down in life and was the cause of considerable anxiety to Jesus and Mary, but he was always a good and well-intentioned lad. Jude was a firebrand. 
He had the highest of ideals, but he was unstable in temperament. He had all the more of his mother's determination and aggressiveness, but he lacked much of her sense of proportion and discretion. Miriam was a well-balanced and level-headed daughter, with a keen appreciation of things noble and spiritual. Martha was slow in thought and action, but a very dependable and efficient child. Baby Ruth was the sunshine of the home. Though thoughtless of speech, she was most sincere of heart. She just about worshipped her big brother and father, but they did not spoil her. She was a beautiful child, but not quite so comely as Miriam, who was the belle of the family, if not the city. As time passed, Jesus did much to liberalize and modify the family teachings and practices related to the Sabbath observance and many other phases of religion, and to all these changes Mary gave hearty assent. By this time, Jesus had become the unquestioned head of the house. This year, Jude started school, and it was necessary for Jesus to sell his harp in order to defray these expenses. Thus disappeared the last of his recreational pleasures. He much loved to play the harp, when tired in mind and weary in body, but he, comfort but he comforted himself with the thought that at least the harp was safe from seizure by the tax collector. Let me add something uh, about uh, the homeschooling that uh, Jesus uh, helped his mother to agree to. This year, Simon started to school, and they were compelled to sell another house. James now took charge of the teaching of his three sisters, two of whom were old enough to begin serious study. As soon as Ruth grew up, she was taken in hand by Miriam and Martha. Ordinarily, the girls of Jewish families received little education, but Jesus maintained, and his mother agreed, that girls should go to school the same as boys, and since the synagogue school would not receive them, there was nothing to do but conduct a home school especially for them. Callie, would you read us what happened with Jesus um, at the end of his 16th year? Yes, your engine artist. It says, by the end of this year, he had just about made up his mind that he would, after rearing his family and seeing them married, enter publicly upon his work as a teacher of truth and as a revealer of the Heavenly Father to the world. He knew that he was not to become the expectant Jewish Messiah, that he concluded that it was next to useless to discuss these matters with his mother. He decided to allow her to entertain whatever ideas she might choose, since all he had said in the past had made little or no impression upon her and he recalled that his father had never been able to say anything that would change her mind. From this year on, he talked less and less with his mother or anyone else about these problems. His was such a peculiar mission that no one living on earth could give him advice. He was a real, though youthful, father to the family. He spent every possible hour with the youngsters, and they truly loved him. This year, he began anew the task of further weaving his mortal and divine natures into a simple and effective human individuality, and he continued to grow in moral status and spiritual understanding. Although all their Nazareth property, except their home, was gone, this year they received a little financial help from the sale of an equity on a piece of property in Capernaum. This was the last of Joseph's entire estate. This real estate deal in Capernaum was with the boat builder named Zebedee. Joseph graduated at the synagogue school this year and prepared to begin 
work at the small bench in the home carpenter shop. Although the estate of their father was exhausted, there were prospects that they would successfully fight off poverty since three of them were now regularly at work. Jesus is rapidly becoming a man, not just a young man, but an adult. He has learned well to bear responsibility. He knows how to carry on in the face of disappointment. He bears up bravely when his plans are thwarted and his purposes temporarily defeated. He has learned how to be fair and just, even in the face of injustice. He is learning how to adjust his ideals of spiritual living to the practical demand of earthly existence. He is learning how to plan for the achievement of a higher and distant goal of idealism while he toils earnestly for the attainment of a nearer and immediate goal of necessity. He is steadily acquiring the art of adjusting his aspirations to the commonplace demands of the human occasion. He has very nearly mastered the technique of utilizing the energy of the spiritual drive to turn the mechanism of the material achievement. He is slowly learning how to live the heavenly life while he continues on with the earthly existence. More and more he depends upon the ultimate guidance of his heavenly father. While he assumes the fatherly role of a guiding and directing the children of his earth family, he is becoming experienced in the skill for wrestling with victory from the very jaws of defeat. He is learning how to transform the difficulties of time into the triumphs of eternity. And so as the years pass, this young man of Nazareth continues to experience life as it is lived in mortal flesh on the worlds of time and space. He lives a full, representative, and replete life on Urantia. He left this world ripe in the experience which his creatures passed through during the short and strenuous years of their first life, the life in the flesh. And all this human experience is an eternal possession of the universe sovereign. He is our understanding brother, sympathetic friend, experienced sovereign, and merciful father. As a child, he accumulated a vast body of knowledge. As a youth, he sorted, classified, and correlated this information. And now, as a man of the realm, he begins to organize these mental possessions, preparatory to utilization of his subsequent teaching, ministry, and service in behalf of his fellow mortals on this world and on all other spheres of habitation throughout the entire universe of Nebadon. Born into the world a babe of the realm, he has lived his childhood life and passed through the successive stages of youth and young manhood. He now stands on the threshold of full manhood, rich in the experience of human living, replete in the understanding of human nature, and full of sympathy for the frailties of human nature. He is becoming expert in the divine art of revealing his paradise father to all ages and stages of mortal creatures. And now, as a full-grown man and adult of the realm, he prepares to continue his supreme mission of revealing God to men and leading men to God. Oh, Callie, that was amazing. Thank you for reading that. Your ancient artist, it's so interesting the way Jesus approached being that father, brother to his brothers and sisters. And, you know, there's a lot of parts I really love. I love uh, how he wanted to che teach his sisters. Um, he was probably teaching them how to read and through the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And the other part that I really liked was just his approach to, um, I guess, discipline in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, in that he took the positive. Um, yes. When you were saying how he was teaching by telling them what to do instead mm -hmm. of the negative, don't do that, stop yeah. doing that. <laughs> yeah, and oftentimes as parents we mm -hmm. do say that to our children. You know, you're not supposed to do such and such. And uh, and it just is not the right way. Yeah. We need to say the good. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
the other part that I really loved was just about how as he was you know being that parent to them he was also you know mastering the technique of um, you know, his personality was unifying at this time mm. more so and it was actually a really crucial time for for Jesus you know he was yeah. growing into a young man his mission was coming up yeah you know and here he is he's taking care of his brothers and sisters and trying to break it to his mom nicely that he doesn't want to get married uh -huh. because he has this mission that's coming up yeah and it's just really beautiful the way um through all of this that was happening he it, like a normal person would be like very stressed yes you know it's like okay i have to take care of my brothers and sisters plus this special mission from the father uh-huh it seems like he wouldn't want to, you know, pay so much attention to his brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But instead, he spent so much time with them. Uh, and did. it seems like he never made them feel like they were bothering him, you know? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he he seems to have really have gotten a lot of enjoyment and um, from, you know, their the relationship that he had with them. You know, he loved them. Yes, he did. And uh, he wanted he wanted them to succeed spiritually, you know. Mm -hmm. But also he wanted them to succeed in this life. Mm -hmm. And that's why it seems that he was really um, showing his brothers, you know, how to work hard and have mm -hmm. their own shop and mm -hmm. own business. And of course, with the sisters, you know, making sure that they were educated. Mm -hmm. he, okay, he's gonna homeschool them, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, just that beautiful balance that mm -hmm. that he seemed to have with them. Mm -hmm. And what about um, at the near the end of uh, what you read? Yes. Uh, do you have some thoughts about that? Uh, that you can share with us how well, uh, you know his, the fact that he um, was that his supreme mission was revealing God to man mm. and leading men to God I really love that part about a lot uh, as he prepares to continue his supreme mission of revealing mm -hmm. God to men and leading men to God. Mm -hmm. What a mission, you ancient artist. Mm -hmm. So he's doing all this, plus taking care of the family. Mm -hmm. And he shows us how to do it in such a beautiful, almost effortless way, even mm -hmm. though I know that he was working so hard um, yes. to save for them. Mm -hmm. But the way he did it, he uh, he did it so well. I guess that's why Rodin said he lived the art of living, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, I would say this is, this is the meaning of the art of living mm -hmm. in the way that he uh, taught them and wanted to put the family first. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, he's putting you know, Heavenly Father first mm -hmm. and doing all this and knowing that a new chapter was starting mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us, your ancient artist. And thank you for being here with me. Thank you, Callie, for sharing your insights and being my associate. I desire to end this with some personal words to each of you who have viewed our podcast. Thank you for watching each of the episodes and to each of you who have left such positive comments. We invite you to each share personal insights about parenting by Jesus. Aloha Nui Loa to all.